Gear O'Meara is the co-founder and CEO of Spirable. Spirable, really interesting company. They're doing lots of things in the sort of AI performance personalization space. They actually won uh, one of our innovation pitches with, uh, with McCormick Foods recently. So I'm going to ask for a very, very warm welcome for, Ge for Gare to join the stage. He's going to be talking about creative performance and how you unleash your creative superpower with AI and insight. So a warm welcome for Gare, please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, excited to talk to you today about creative AI. Um, when we think about creative, you know, even going back to the 50s, the smartest ad men understood that creative was a powerful force, force and it's what drives performance and outcomes for brands. And if we think back to the, you know, to the last couple of decades, you can remember some of the greatest advertising campaigns. The Milky Bar Kid, the Coca-Cola Guy, um, Cadbury's Gorilla, etc. And why, why can you remember that as a question? Well, Google and Facebook have crunched a lot of data and they understand that about 70% of the performance of your campaign is down to the creative. Are you creating a story that's compelling and going to get attention for your audience? And if you can do that, you're going to get the results for your brand. And I guess the question is, well, why isn't everybody doing that? If it's, you know, if creative is so important, why isn't every brand knocking out great creative time after time? And the reality is there's a lot of challenges around coming up with good creative and good storytelling. And a lot of them have to do with the fact that it's a very manual process, it's difficult to scale, and you're depending on your creative person to keep coming up with new ideas. And no matter what you do, there's a bias built into your creative team and over time, it becomes very difficult to scale that creative process. Well, that's what's changing, and it's changing today. And Spiral is actually launching a new creative intelligence product that changes the way brands approach their storytelling. And what we're enabling these brands to do is we're enabling them to understand why their creative is performing well or not so well. And that changes your ability to actually put together creative that is going to work and get the attention of your customers. How do we do this? Well, we bring together years of uh, AI work that allows you to analyze your videos, your creative, before it actually goes live. And you can start to get an understanding as to, will version A or version B perform better? And why? What is it about the object, the layer, the motion, the text density, or the memorability of an image, all these different stimuli that actually gets somebody's attention and drives the performance for the brand. And essentially what that's doing is, it's taking the guesswork out of your whole creative process. Because now when you're inside Inspirable in our template builder, building your story or your video template, you've got an AI assistant that's essentially guiding you along and telling you, this particular asset over this one is going to get more, more attention from your audience. It's going to drive the performance. It's going to be good for your brand outcomes. And it's guiding you through that journey right from the start as you're building your template. It's telling you, okay, this asset over this asset is going to be more effective. And we break that down then into three different areas. The first area is around computer vision. So that's that looking at all those assets, looking at how you're putting your template together and giving you insight into what's going to work the best. The second thing we're doing is we're looking at, well, what worked well for you as a brand in the past? So historically analyzing all your creative and figuring out as a brand, this is what works well for you and giving you that insight that guides your future storytelling. And the final area and what we're layering across the top of all this is all that knowledge that is out there from the likes of Facebook, Google, etc., around best practice. So giving your creative team the guardrails that's allowing them to create a story that's more likely to perform better for your brand. And the question is, okay, well, how can we prove that this works? And well, I'm going to show you how. And this is from our work with Aldi, the grocery retailer. Over here, what we have is, we've got an example of a 
dynamic video that they put together. This is what their creative team sat down and came up with. Using the Spireable Creative Intelligence product, they were able to analyze how likely is an audience to engage with that video. What is the attention curve? And the graph that you see there is the attention drop-off. So you can see, you, if you put this video live, the likelihood is at the start, you're going to get these peaks of attention. You're doing really well. Your audience is focused and you're creative. They're engaging. As you get to the middle of the video, there's a massive drop-off. And the question is what? Now, there's a whole load of stimuli going on there. You've got animation. You've got text density. You've got imagery. And what the platform is doing is flagging that it's the actual image that is causing a drop-off in intention. So what Aldi did was they took that learning and they created a new example, a new version of their actual video through the Spireable Template Builder by removing one of the scenes and replacing it with another scene. And what they did then was they said, OK, well, we're not going to take it for granted. We're going to take our original version that our creative team came up with, and we're going to take the Spireable Creative Intelligence version, and we're going to put the two of them live in a creative split test, and we're going to see which one performs better. And the creative AI outperformed the original by 7 or 8%. So that's how you're using AI to guide your creative process. And before you even go live and you burn through your media budget, you're getting insight into how to optimize and how to improve your video. That's what Aldi did, 8% uplift without burning a $1 worth of media budget. It's creative optimization driven by AI, driven by creative intelligence, and it doesn't stop there. Within the platform, you can make the changes, create your multiple versions, push them all live, and see the uplift in the actual performance. Um, that's our story. We're based here at the Cabana next door. Love to talk to you guys. So, Jay, thank you very much. Thank you. We've got time for a little bit of, uh, of Q&A, Jay. Um, it's really interesting. You talked a lot about attention. Um, we've had a whole uh, mini event within MadFest based on attention today. Seems to be a bit of a driving force in new currency and advertising. Is that something you're leveraging? Or how, how are clients actually embracing this idea of attention? Absolutely. It's all about, it. it's all about attention. Um, I think when we're looking at it from a creative AI perspective, what's so critical is the first second and a half. If you don't capture somebody's attention in that first second and a half, you've lost them. You're there on social, you're scrolling through your Instagram feed. If you don't have something really compelling, you've lost their attention and your opportunity has gone as a brand. So a lot of what we're doing is enabling brands to use AI to look at all their assets and figure out how can they capture somebody's attention in that first second and a half, stop the thumb scrolling past, and then hold them there so that that person gets the story. And then once they've seen the story, that just drives the recall. It all starts with the first second and a half. So we do have uh, shorter attention spans than mosquitoes. You need to capture that first two seconds. And what's the link to actual performance to sales? You know, how, how, how does that actually follow from oh. those two minutes of two seconds of attention through to the sale? Well, you could see it there for Aldi, um, that ability uh, to avoid the drop-off. It's 7 8% increase in engagement. And what that does is it's all the way through the funnel. You're driving more click-throughs, you're driving more conversions, and ultimately more sales. And when you think about the media budgets that the bigger brands are spending, if you can move the needle by a couple of percent, it's a major return on investment for the brand. So attention at the end of the day equals ROI for the brand. And we've, we've always suffered, perhaps as an industry, of this church and state relationship between uh, technology and creativity. We had Rory Sutherland talking about this yesterday. Um, what, what, what does the whole industry, particularly agencies, need to do to actually um, you know, have a much more fruitful uh, uh, relationship between technology and creativity? Absolutely. You know, the creatives aren't going away. Um, so, Dan, the creatives are going to be there. They're coming up with the big ideas. They're coming up with the modular assets. They're out there shooting assets. But what you're doing with data and AI is you're giving them a steer as to what works best. So before you even go out and shoot your assets, you're looking at a historical analysis of what's worked well for you as a brand in the past. So now you're more focused and your decision making is driven by data 
on what actually drives performance. The creatives aren't out of a job, but what they're doing now is they're supercharged by data and AI, so they focus on stuff that's going to work. And it changes storytelling. It's a better story. It drives performance for the brands. So the future is, it's not going to be robots building the whole uh, you know, creative output. What it is, is it's human supercharged by AI and data. Um, we, we had a uh, live ramp talking just, just, uh, just a moment ago, and we were talking about the sort of complexity of uh, the ad tech ecosystem and all the things that you need to worry about. I mean, is this just another thing that marketers need to think about? How, how can it actually make people's lives easier? Yeah, you see, I think, um, is it just another thing? Well, I think it's probably the main thing. Um, you know, it's Google said um, through their research that 70% of performance is driven by the creative. So you can be optimizing your media all day long, but unless the creative is, is right and is compelling for your audience, it's not going to get the results. So, you know, as far as, we, as far as we're concerned, as far as Google's concerned and Facebook's concerned, it starts with the storytelling, it starts with the creative. And then after that, yeah, you know, you can refine and you can tune it and you can optimize it, but it starts with the story. And how, how do you actually scale this stuff? You know, how scalable is it? So that's a very good question. And that's where, where Spirable started was in the scale side. So we're a data-driven technology. And essentially, you create a template, you push the data through it, and you create thousands of versions. And that's how you scale it. You use technology, you use data, and you take the good ideas, you bring the AI together with it to optimize it, and then you push the data through the technology and you create thousands of versions. And that's how it works. Without the technology, it's impossible. You can't do it manually, you can't work at the scales, and you can't keep it repeat every day, every week, that performance without the technology and the data behind you. Big theme of this, this event, I think in particular, uh, and, and lots of the conversations that you, you follow online, uh, it's around brand safety. Um, you know, obviously, we're putting a lot, of, a lot of trust in the machines here to deliver the right creative. How do you actually avoid the wrong creative being in, in the wrong place at the wrong time? It's, it's a very good point. And obviously, you know, you know, we've built a workflow that has a, a focus on you know, quality control, testing, um, and putting those checks in place that make sure that the right video goes to the right audience. Um, so that's a big part of it. So QA testing and making sure that the brand is on, you know, the creative is on brand is key. But also then what we've done is we've built into the technology uh, the client's brand guidelines to make sure, to add those guardrails, to make sure that what the machine is generating isn't starting to, you know, go off the reservation um, and starting to create content that doesn't align with the brand. So you've got a combination of technology, uh, keeping, it, keeping it on brand, and then you've got that QA step, which gives it that human layer that can double check that everything is spot on before it goes out the door. Fantastic. And I'm going to ask, a, 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 I guess, a fairly uh, big question. I mean, uh, quite a lot has happened in the world recently. Uh, and um, a lot of brands, are they, are they making decisions around where they place ads, their creative, based on old patterns of human behavior? What, what sort of data are you collecting and, and how can I actually inform future decisions and, and where the actual the world is going right now? It's a, it's a very interesting question. Ended on question. a big one, sorry. Yeah, no, it's a very interesting question. And I think we started the presentation talking about the 1950s. Certain things haven't changed. People love a good story then, and that hasn't changed and that won't change. But how we tell a story has changed and how we distribute it across the channels, etc., is changing very quickly. So. You know, I think storytelling and good storytelling hasn't changed, but how you approach the process of building the story and where you're going to push that story out to has changed very quickly. And even what worked three years ago won't necessarily work today. So you have to keep on top of it. And as a technology company, we're always looking to the future. And, you know, we're talking about video today. You know, very quickly, who knows what the formats will be in the future um, or where it will be pushed out. It's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snap, YouTube today. Who knows where it's going to be tomorrow? Fantastic. We're just about out of time, Jer. I'd like everyone to thank Jer for a fantastic session. Thanks, Jer. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks.